Hello and welcome to this video in which we compute the discrete time Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse. This is an exercise that's useful for several reasons. One is that um, it shows you a lot of the tricks that you end up using to compute um, a discrete time Fourier series. And also it's a useful result um, in the sense that rectangular pulses quite often make up or, or can be used to represent other signals. And so if you know the Fourier transform of the rectangular pulse, quite often you can use uh, Fourier transform properties to find the Fourier transform of other signals. So what I've done here is we've graphed a, um, a rectangular pulse. In this particular case, cap n is equal to 5. I have five uh, values or uh, yeah, five uh, values of x of n where it's not 0, where it's 1, and then it's 0 everywhere else. And so our goal is to compute the discrete time Fourier transform. And we'll do this by just basically starting with our formula for the discrete time Fourier transform and then simplifying things as we go. Okay, so our formula looks like this. Now the first simplification, in fact almost the only simplification, is that when n is less than 0, x of n is 0, and when n is greater than cap n, which in this case is, uh, I'm sorry, when n is greater than or equal to cap n, which in this case is 5, x of n is 0. So the only terms that show up here are the terms going, uh, n going from 0 to cap n minus 1. And in this range, x of n is 1. So I have e to the minus j n omega. We're going to write this a little differently as e to the minus j omega raised to the n. And the reason that we'll do that is that this is now a geometric sum or a geometric series and I have a formula that will allow me to um, compute this sum. So let's copy this and get ourselves a nice clean screen to work on because it's going to take quite a bit of effort now to simplify this. And I have then that this summation using my formula is 1 minus e to the minus j omega uh, raised to the nth power. Oh, that's awful. Every so often my drawing program just sort of freezes up. Over 1 minus e to the minus j omega. And you'll remember that this is uh, what we get when we sum a geometric series for n terms. And so what I need to do now is, in some sense, I'm done. I could actually just throw this into MATLAB and I'd get plots and stuff like that of the Fourier series, or I'm sorry, the Fourier transform. But what I want to do is go through some uh, derivations because first off, derivations are fun. They're good for your soul. And secondly, it gets it into a form that we can actually uh, interpret a little bit. Besides this, this also illustrates a trick that shows up over and over again when you're doing um, these Fourier transform computations. So let's start with this guy here. And what I will do is multiply, I am going to factor 1 into e to the j, e to the minus j omega over 2 times e to the j omega over 2. That gives me 1. And I'm going to factor e to the, I dropped a minus here already. Um, I'm going to factor e to the minus j omega into e to the minus j omega over 2, this guy, times e to the minus j omega over 2. And the reason I want to do that is I immediately now recognize this as being equal to um, 2j times sine omega over 2. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, this is basically Euler's formula. So what I have then is I've taken this term here, and by messing with it a little bit, I now have it in terms of a 2 times sine omega over 2, which gives me essentially the uh, magnitude. And then I have an e to the minus j omega over 2 term still left, and a j term still left, which gives me a phase. So that's um, actually quite useful. Okay, we'll do the same thing for this term up here, where we will write, uh, first off, we'll write this as 1 minus e to the minus j n omega. And then we'll uh, factor out an e to the minus j omega n over 2. We're essentially doing up here what we did down here, except now we've got a j n omega where we had a j omega before. So we write this as e to the j omega n over 2 minus e to the minus j omega n over 2. And we discover quickly then that this is equal to e to the minus j omega n over 2 times 2j sine um, omega n over 2. Okay, so um, we can then so we can write this whole sum up here as uh, e to the minus j omega n over 2 times 2j sine omega n over 2 divided by, so that's this chunk, divided by the orange chunk, which is e to the minus j omega over 2, 2j sine omega over 2. So the 2j's cancel. I can take these two terms and basically uh, take the top term, divide it by the bottom term, and that gives me e to the minus j omega n minus 1 over 2. And I have sine of omega n over 2 over sine of omega over 2. So um, I'm left with this result that actually is pretty tidy. Uh, the, this term, the sine of omega uh, times n over 2 times sine of omega over 2, this gives me the magnitude um, of the Fourier transform, and this gives me the phase. Now that's not exactly correct because this term here will be negative for some values of omega, and that will affect the phase. Uh, when this guy goes negative, you'll see sharp jumps in the phase. So if I plot this, this is um, omega on the horizontal axis going from 0 to 2 pi. This is the real part of the Fourier transform. And this is the imaginary part. And I can also plot this in terms of magnitude and phase. This is the magnitude. And this is the phase angle. And so you can see. Um, those of you that are familiar with the Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse, when you're dealing with a continuous time signal, you get what's called a sink function. And you can see that this has the same general shape as the magnitude of the sink function. But instead of going on forever, uh, this uh, magnitude is periodic. And so it repeats this pattern over and over and over again. Uh, the phase angle. These sharp jumps in phase angle at uh, this point here and this point here are actually points where the sine of n over 2 omega divided by the sine of omega over 2, where that changes sine. So um, 
I don't know. I'm not sure what else to say about this. Uh, the primary purpose, again, of this is to produce a result that turns out to be useful in a lot of other situations, as well as to show you how to compute discrete time Fourier transforms. Um, the fact that with discrete time Fourier transforms, I get summations that look like this, and I end up solving them like this as if they're geometric series, uh, that shows up a lot. So that's a very useful trick to know. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.